From evolutions by our own design to ones that we need to do in order to survive, join me as we show you eight possible evolutions of mankind in the years to come. Number 8. Man and Machine One of the most popular things in sci-fi television and movies is the concept of a cyborg, or to put it much more simply, a fusion between mankind and machine in such a way that they're in perfect unison and can function perfectly despite having artificial parts. As of right now, this is indeed science fiction, but for how much longer remains to be seen? After all, a key part of the world right now is that of prosthetics aka artificial body parts that are used to replace natural ones. The field of prosthetics has grown greatly over the years, to the extent that they're working on ways to help make it so that the new limbs and body parts can work in conjunction with the human brain to work even more efficiently. Admittedly, it's a slow process, but it could work eventually, and should it go like that, cybernetics could become a field that is part of the evolution of humanity. Because eventually, it could be determined that at birth, children need cybernetics in order to survive as part of the world via various external reasons. So eventually, mankind could be one that is outfitted to be cyborgs. And what it means to be truly human could be a question that no one has the answer to because we're all cybernetic in our own ways. Again, this possibility is a long way away, and for you Star Trek fans, we're a long way from being Borg. But the best way to fight the frailty of the human body is to replace it with something that won't fade as quickly, and cybernetics definitely fits that bill. Number 7. One Race on Earth One of the things that humanity is known for isn't just the numbers or advancements in technology, but rather the different race that live within the group of humanity itself. There are, aren't just white people and black people, as some people claim. If you look at a person of American descent and another of Chinese descent, there are very stark differences. Even ones of African descent have subtle differences depending on the nation they live on in Africa, or if they live in Africa at all. No matter what, though, race helps define who we are, even if we don't realize it. And the diversification of race is one that comes via evolution as mankind started out in Africa, or so the best theories of the evolution of mankind say so, and then spread across the world. But now that the world is now known, many are wondering if eventually races will die out. Not in the sense of everybody dying, but rather that through generations of integration, our bodies and DNA will become so alike that eventually the lines of race will blur out and we'll all be a part of a singular race. This theory is called monoethnicity, and it's definitely an intriguing one. Whether it's possible isn't known because of all the diversification in the world today, but over the course of many years, anything is possible. Number 6. Non-Muscular Humans Did you know that on the International Space Station there are exercise bikes and other machines up there meant to get the astronauts working out on a regular basis? Do you know why that is? It's because in space, if you don't work out and keep your muscles flexing, they're going to wither away. Gravity doesn't exist in space, so there's no pressure on them to keep them strong. However, a very similar epidemic is happening here on Earth. Mainly, humanity isn't exercising, and it's beginning to show, because obesity is through the roof right now. 30% of the planet is obese. The rise of technology has literally made humanity fatter and weaker. And should technology continue to advance, we could find ourselves in an even more sorry state. So much so that we evolve into a type of humanity that we don't even recognize anymore. One that is helped along by technology because we don't want to do the work ourselves or are literally powerless to do so because of muscular atrophy. Doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? Number 5. Tougher World, Tougher Humans one of the biggest factors in the evolution of humanity isn't necessarily our technology, though that definitely helps, but rather our ability to evolve to the world around us. Throughout history, humanity has had to adapt to survive. When the Ice Age came, the humans had to build places to keep them warm, get furs to protect their skin, and build fires where they could. This helped them to evolve to remember these things and be tougher in the face of these challenges. While it may not seem like that would happen to us, our world is almost always on the tip of a needle in terms of radical change. Nuclear war could happen, 
flood, the atmosphere with radiation force us underground, and we could evolve through living like that for hundreds of years, to the extent that if we were to return to the surface, the radiation may not harm us. Or if the world got flooded, it's possible that the human body could adapt to breathe underwater, or if the temperature of the world continues to rise, we'll adapt our skin so that it's not able to be burned and our innards will be protected from the heat. On and on it could go, the planet doesn't evolve to us, we evolve to what the planet is like. And if the planet gets extreme, our evolution will have to just get as extreme. Number 4. Strong Medicine, Weaker Bodies one of the biggest technological advancements that humanity has done in the last hundred years or so is the growth of medicine. It has truly changed our lives. And in another hundred years, who knows what else could be born? Life could evolve to one that is fueled by medicine. But is that a good thing? There are those out there right now who fear that eventually the human body will become so conditioned to the use of medicine that it won't be able to function without it. Not unlike how a drug addict goes through withdrawal because they don't have their medicine in them. Many fear that our immune systems will slowly devolve while medicine evolves. So we could be medically okay, but also have bodies that are too weak to support themselves without it. Which could leave our society in a very sorry state. Number 3. The Matrix Let me tell you why you're here. It's the wool that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. The truth about the real world. Sound familiar? Yeah, that's Morpheus from The Matrix, a film about a world where humanity for the most part don't live in the real world, but rather live in a computer simulation that is attached to us physically through our bodies and minds, yet we don't know about it until we're unplugged. This is another thing that may sound like high sci-fi fantasy, but it's really not. There are many out there who feel that the evolution of man will soon become so impossible in the physical sense that it must evolve into the mental stages, and that leads to most thinking that people's brains will be scanned and inputted into computers. Again, not as far-fetched as you think. Brain scanning is already possible, and there are some artificial intelligences that are based on the real-life scans of real-life human brains. So imagine advancing that technology to such an extent that you could put yourself into a computer simulation and basically be immortal. Or if that isn't appealing enough, you could live, die, and then be reborn in the program and basically live a life of reincarnation as long as the systems stay up. There are many in the world right now who feel that we actually live in the Matrix, and in a few thousand years we may actually do that. Number 2. Selective Legacy Let's continue into the sci-fi realm now. Imagine being able to have such technology at your fingertips that you would not only be able to live happily, but be able to pick and choose exactly what your offspring would be like. Sounds like a dream, right? But many scientists think that should things keep advancing, this could be possible. And our evolution would not be one of random genetics colliding, but rather choosing what our legacy will be. This notion came from Jeffrey Miller, who is an evolutionary psychologist at the University of New Mexico, and he feels that eventually two people could choose which traits to put into their child. Parents could basically choose which sperm and egg get to meet up to produce a baby based on genetic information about which genes contribute to which physical and mental traits, he said. If you think about it, that's a lot of power in the palm of your hand, so to speak. Picture it. Imagine you, a brunette, want to have a child with your partner, a redhead. A model could be put in front of you and you could pick and choose exactly what your child would be like in terms of traits. Would you want them to have brown hair or red? What about eye color? Should the child be tall like the father or average height like the mother? What about their build? Should they be strong, lean, a bit plump, strong constitution? average constitution, and on and on it would go until you have your perfect child. If you're curious how this is an evolution, it's because we're evolving beyond the need for random chance, and putting the fate of our race into the minds and hearts of those who are already living. Number 1. Humans Can't Evolve Anymore I know after all I've talked about in this list, you might find it out that I'm saying that humans might not evolve anymore. But it's not me saying it, it's actually very accredited scientist pointing out that evolution requires very specific things to happen in order for evolution to come over time. And their logic is that because humanity doesn't have these stimuli, as of yet, 
that we have reached our peak evolution. Because we have evolved, it's natural to imagine we will continue to do so, but I think that's wrong. Anthropologist Ian Tattersall of New York's American Museum of Natural History said, What's his logic behind this? Well, it's not so much the world around us changing, as I outlined the possibility earlier, but rather if the world doesn't change in the extreme sense, and we continue to live as we are right now, there will be no need to evolve. Since the advent of settled life, human populations have expanded enormously. Homo sapiens is densely packed across the Earth, and individuals are unprecedentedly mobile. In this situation, the fixation of any meaningful evolution novelties in the human population is highly improbable, Tattersall said. Human beings are just going to have to learn to live with themselves as they are. Another way to look at this is to talk about Charles Darwin's notion of survival of the fittest, which many speculate is why Homo sapiens won out over their Neanderthal cousins in terms of evolution, because they could do more. On Earth right now, though, Homo sapiens are all we have. Plus, we're so advanced that we have better medicine, better living quarters, easier ways to get food, etc. Animals, in this example, non-humans, in the wild have to evolve in order to stay alive because of the plethora of other creatures that are out there, or because their prey predators have evolved to get even better. At present, nothing can match the human. Nothing challenges us in the survival of the fittest way. So at present, there's no need to grow. There's no need to evolve. We can make ourselves better in non-evolutionary ways, and that's why in evolution sense we may not evolve anymore. Thanks for watching everyone! What did you think about these potential evolutions of mankind? Do you think that any of them are possible, or even very likely? Which ones stand out to you the most? Do you know another that might be in line per se? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.